Hi everyone. This is Elizabeth Hensky. I'm the director of the Center for Lamb Research and Clinical Care at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm also a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and a physician at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. I'm very excited to have this chance to tell you about our work on lysosomes and tuberous sclerosis. These are members of our team who drove this work forward. Nico Alessi, a physician scientist, Eli Akil, also a physician scientist, and Damir Habibulin, as well as other members of my research laboratory and key collaborators, especially Sereni Viswanathan at the Dana-Farber and Sean Ferguson at Yale. I'm going to tell you about four key discoveries that the number of lysosomes is increased in tuberous sclerosis, that a key gene called TFEB, T-F-E-B, is responsible for this increase in lysosomes and also controls the growth of tumor cells in TSC. And then I'll mention, but not go into detail, about two reasons why we think that TFEB is more active than it should be in TSC. My laboratory is especially interested in the kidney and lung disease in TSC. Renal angiomyolipomas are the most common kidney tumor in TSC. This is one kidney from a woman with TSC who has literally dozens of angiomyolipomas. You can see a large one here that appears to have a blood clot within it. These tumors contain fat. You can see that just by eye. And this is a CT scan showing a normal kidney and a kidney that has a very large angiomyolipoma. We also are interested in LAM, lymphangioliomyomatosis. This is a normal CT scan of the chest and this is a chest CT scan from a woman who has tuberous sclerosis and LAM. You can see that she has these cysts or holes in the lungs. There are two relatively large ones here. There are also many, many small ones, too many to count. So this project started when we discovered that tumor cells in the kidneys of a mouse model of tuberous sclerosis have too many lysosomes. And you can see this here by electron microscopy where the arrows are pointing to little black dots and each of those little black dots represents a lysosome. So what is a lysosome? The lysosomes are organelles that occur normally in all of our cells. And their job is to help get rid of things that your cell no longer wants or needs. Um, the lysosome reminds me of a container of Drano, for example. Um, Drano is a very caustic substance that needs to be carefully compartmentalized to keep it from damaging other things. And Similarly, the enzymes that are inside of a lysosome need to be kept away from the rest of the cell or they would damage the cell. We found that lysosomal genes are elevated in angiomyolipomas using a database that was developed by Jeff McKeegan. These are many lysosomal genes all elevated in angiomyolipomas and many lysosomal genes are also elevated in subependymal giant cell astrocytomas, telling us that what we were seeing in the mouse was likely also important in human TSC. We saw elevation of a key lysosomal protein called the Neiman Pick Complex 1 protein, or NPC1, in TSC-associated kidney tumors, again, telling us that there are too many lysosomes in these cells. We see that with this brown staining here. So these are cells in an angiomyolipoma compared to normal cells in a blood vessel. And you can see that the angiomyolipoma cells have more of this brown stain, indicating that they have more lysosomes. 
We see that also in a TSC-associated kidney cancer. Here are the cancerous cells, and they're very brown, indicating a lot of NPC1 or lysosomes. And here is the normal kidney, much less brown color. So lysosomes appear to be increased in TSC. There is a protein in the nucleus of the cell called TFEB that controls many of these lysosomal genes that we saw elevated in angiomyolipomas and subependymal giant cell astrocytomas. So we wanted to know if TFEB was increased in TSC, and it is. You can see here in an angiomyolipoma this arrow pointing to a cell that has a lot of brown stain in its nucleus, indicating that it has TFEB in its nucleus. And this is the slide that I showed you before, showing that these same cells have a lot of lysosomes seen through NPC1. And we see the same thing with the TSC-associated kidney cancer, that there is a lot more TFEB in the tumor than there is in the normal kidney right next door. We also saw in cells that we culture on a petri dish that TFEB, TFEB, is much more present in the nucleus of cells where we have decreased the levels of TSC1 or TSC2. So here the green color is TFEB, and you can see a lot of TFEB in the nucleus in these cells, and most of the TFEB is in the cytoplasm in the normal control cells. A lot is already known about how TFEB is regulated. And in fact, as shown in this little cartoon, when mTOR complex 1 is hyperactive, as it is in tuberous sclerosis, TFEB should stay in the cytoplasm. It should not be in the nucleus, as we see it is here, suggesting that something very unusual is happening in tuberous sclerosis to allow TFEB to be in the nucleus. Importantly, once TFEB gets to the nucleus, it is promoting the growth of tumor cells in TSC. We can see this here in a growth assay, where decreasing the levels of TFEB decrease the growth of TSC2 deficient cells on a petri dish by about 50%. And in a mouse, knocking down or decreasing the levels of TFEB blocks the growth of tumor cells by about 60%. I won't go into detail here, but we have done a lot of work to try to understand why TFEB is in the nucleus. Using a fluorescent microscope, we have found that a particular protein called RAG-C is involved in this nuclear localization. And we also can use a technique called a Western blot to look at phosphorylation of TFEB in cells that lack the TSC2 protein. And we think both of these are very important clues to why TFEB is in the nucleus. So I've shown you that lysosomes and nuclear TFEB are increased in many different tumors in tuberous sclerosis and in LAM. I've also shown you that if we decrease the levels of TFEB, we can decrease the growth of tumor cells in TSC, both on a petri dish and also in mice. And I mentioned these two last points that I are related to why TFEB is there. So I wanna bring this back, this is my last slide, to thinking about why this is important. So we see that lysosomes are increased in tuberous sclerosis, and lysosomes are organelles in every cell that contain enzymes that can degrade other proteins, kind of like Drano. So in the tumor cells in TSC, there are too many of these lysosomes. And we'd like to understand why there are too many lysosomes. How do lysosomes promote tumor growth in TSC? And of course, most importantly, can we inhibit TFEB 
in individuals who have tuberous sclerosis to treat tuberous sclerosis. And to help us understand why these lysosomes might be making the tumor cells grow, we're taking advantage of some knowledge that's already in the literature that sometimes these lysosomal enzymes can leak out of cells like a leaky pipe. And you can imagine that if you were to pour Drano into this leaky pipe, the Drano would end up outside of the pipe and could easily damage whatever you happen to be storing under the sink or damage the pipe itself. So we wonder if these lysosomal enzymes are leaking out and if that is helping tumors like angiomyelipomas grow and also whether these leaking lysosomal enzymes might be damaging the lungs in lamb and causing that cystic lung disease that I showed you earlier on the CT scan. This is my email. I would love to hear from you if you have thoughts or questions about this. And I thank you for listening. And uh, it's been great to be participating in this meeting. We're so happy that the Tuberous Sclerosis Association was able to bring us all together. Thank you.